close the day, we're going to analyze a video from Mr. Alexander Stubb, which is a Western academic. He's basically criticizing the position of John uh, Meishamer, who is another uh, Western academic from the USA. So um, this is the quality of academics that we've got on the West, here in the West, sorry. Um, pretty much uh, propaganda, inaccurate information uh, what's going on in Ukraine and the reasons why this war is taking place. And obviously this has been done on purpose. So I'll be adding my comments to these videos that I'm going to show you to you. It's just extracts of the same video, right? In which you will notice how this guy is lying on purpose. So let's go with the first one. Uh, his claim is very simple and straightforward. He's basically saying uh, that, well, Russia couldn't help itself, that the war was actually caused by, well, aggressive behavior by the United States, but more specifically driving Ukraine, Georgia and other countries on the eastern flank towards NATO membership uh, and uh, EU membership. Now, with my background uh, as someone who has met uh, Vladimir Putin, met uh, Dmitry Medvedev, uh, met uh, Sergei Lavrov, many of these multiple times, uh, I would like to take issue with uh, what Mersheimer uh, claims. Uh, and today I will give with my academic background and my policy, practical political background, uh, five reasons why I think uh, that Mersheimer is wrong. I don't have a problem with anyone making... Okay, I don't have a problem with any... <laughs> They always say that, right? So basically, um, who's going to counter the argument of Meisheimer today? And um, as you heard him saying, he doesn't believe that NATO expansion is a problem. No. But the Chinese, apparently, they agreed on putting a spying base in Cuba. And the Americans are like, Whoa, what's going on here? We're back to the Cold War, right? But putting missiles in Ukraine, like nuclear missiles, or including Ukraine into an aggressive uh, military union, it, it shouldn't be a problem for Russia. But if Mexico gets into an aggressive military union with Russia, that will be a big problem in the USA, isn't it? So let's listen to the next extract. Point number three, Mersheimer, like many others in the realist school, believe that Ukraine should subdue. Some talked earlier on uh, in the conflict about the Finlandization uh, of Ukraine, which essentially meant that you had to compromise on your values, uh, on your security, on your politics and your basic existence uh, by in order to achieve peace. I fundamentally disagree with this thesis. And the starting point is very simple. Every independent and sovereign nation state should have the freedom to choose which club it wants to join. Do you hear that? This, this guy is basically ignoring completely the fact that the West conducted or helped a coup d'etat in Ukraine that put individuals in power that they basically favor the West and now they westernizing Ukraine and bringing it into Western Europe. This is completely contradictory. It's hypocritical. He, he's basically saying that the realists like Mr. Meishheimer, they, they believe that Ukraine should basically approach Russia. But he's not acknowledging the fact that the West has actually done this. He doesn't see any problem with that. Let's listen to the next extract. I have met Putin a few times, and I can okay. tell you one thing. He hates the West. He hates liberal democracy. He believes that the West is decadent, and he actually believes that he can save the West from itself. That is one of the reasons that he attacked uh, Ukraine. The real reason was not NATO. That was only a pretext for a way of life which he rejects. He rejected it in Chechnya, he rejected it in Syria, 
he rejects liberal democracy at every possible turn and he's what he's even talking about putin is rejecting liberal democracy okay so many countries around the world do it as well and many of those countries like saudi arabia for example they're still in business with the USA and European countries. What is he even talking about? Anyways, he clearly said that he knows Putin and he, he knows that this is the main reason why he attacked Ukraine because he hates uh, liberal democracies, basically. Uh, this is a pure, very pure excuse, anyways. So um, he, he did mention that, he mentioned Syria. So was the West trying to bring liberal democracy in Syria? We have the Islamic State and Russia went to destroy the Islamic State. So how can you say that the destruction of the Islamic State is basically opposing Western liberal values or whatever that Putin hates? It makes no sense whatsoever. Let's continue listening. Now, NATO enlargement took place because the countries that had been Soviet satellites during the Cold War, they wanted to get that extra protection, and for fully understandable reasons. But that expansion was not aggressive. NATO has never attacked another country. Its mere existence uh, has been a guarantee uh, for peace. Now, Putin has used NATO expansion as an excuse, but remember, he attacked Georgia and created the frozen conflicts only a few months after the NATO summit uh, in Bucharest. And I know a thing or two about it because I was there mediating peace in Belize and in Moscow. Okay, he's saying that Russia attacked Georgia. He was there, he knows it, right? Well, this guy didn't do his research. Look at his article from the from Reuters basically confirming an EU-backed report that actually says that Georgia started the conflict, not Russia. This guy didn't do his research. He's a professor. This is the quality of professors that we gain in Western academia, okay? So you can read this report. It's basically uh, saying that there's evidence of ethnic cleansing against uh, Georgians in so sorry Russians in South Ossetia and this is why the Russians have to intervene but they blame the Georgians for that war this guy didn't do his proper research right oh goodness but that expansion was not aggressive he said NATO expansion was not aggressive and he said NATO never attack a country what was, is he even joking is he joking or what? 2011, Libya, they went into Iraq with ISAF. They went into so many different countries. Even if it wasn't NATO as an organization, there were the countries that are part of NATO that attack many countries. It's not a defensive uh, organization. If it was, it should be finished. The Soviet Union is gone. So why they continue to exist? The Soviet Union is not there. The Warsaw Pact is not there. But NATO is there, creating new wars, basically. And setting fire in different countries. Let's finish this. Attempt to accommodate Russia into the WTO, into uh, G8. But it wasn't possible. Why? Because I come back to the original thesis. Russia, unfortunately, with the current leadership, is a revisionist, imperialist and expansionist power. This war is not the fault of the United States, it's not the fault of the West, it's not the fault of the European Union, and it's not the fault of Ukraine. Okay, okay, he's just washing the hands of the USA, Ukraine, all these countries that basically finance Ukraine to conduct this war, to provoke Russia into attacking Ukraine. And today Ukraine has committed uh, war crimes, apparently the Russians as well, according to some reports. But the fact that he's saying this at the end, that the war is not... It's not the fault of, of the USA, of NATO, it's the fault of Russia. It, we can say that this guy is a propagandist. And like this guy, we've got many professors at schools that are completely biased and they don't look at the conflict uh, realistically. They don't look at what we can see. They're just providing you a version which is complete propaganda. So every single thing he said, you can find evidence that whatever he say here is not true. The video is quite long, 
I didn't cover the whole thing, but I cover the most important parts. So be careful with this 